Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Tanisha Cherry and happy Vlogmas Day 1. I'm so excited. I'm so shocked I'm doing this. <laughs> Bear with me. If you are new to my channel, I'm a lifestyle content creator based here in Canada and I am here to give you all your lifestyle, beauty, fashion, and travel and pop culture commentary needs, honey. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you can get notified of all my upcoming videos. And of course, thumbs up this video. And if there's anything in the video that made you laugh, that you're like, mm, girl, I disagree, or you have further questions about, make sure you drop it down in the comment below because I'm always reading my comments and engaging with you guys. It's honestly the best part of making the video is the conversation and kiki afterwards, okay? If you're not already following me on Instagram, make sure that you're following me at Tanisha.Cherry. I'll be definitely running some polls over there this month to kind of dive into what kind of videos you guys want to see from me. And of course, answering any other further questions that you may have that you didn't want to post here publicly in the commentary section. As you guys know, this is my day one vlogmas video. I'm so excited for myself and for you guys to watch. Uh, just a quick recap, I am doing Vlogmas this year, it's my first time doing Vlogmas. How I'll be doing it is I'll be posting a daily weekday video. Keyword, weekday. <laughs> okay, you guys, because I don't want you guys to come on the weekend and be like, dang, she didn't post a new video. No, I'm giving the weekends to give you guys a break to catch up on the videos you didn't get to watch on the day that it was published, as well as to give myself a break because posting videos every day and editing them them the same day is a lot of work so that's how we're gonna be doing it and I'm excited as you can tell by the title today we are talking all about my move so if you follow me on Instagram at Tanisha.Cherry and if you don't make sure you go follow me now because I just be on there just talking a whole bunch of mess and posting some really fire photos by the way shout out to my photographer but as you know by the title today's video we're gonna be talking all about my move Yes, I did move. If you listen to my podcast, Cherry Lounge Podcast, this episode <laughs> in the Pond the Replay, I talked all about how I'm navigating this Panderosa that we're in, lockdown with the C word. I was basically expressing how I'm navigating this time. I'm a Taurus and I thrive through routine and change really, really can rattle that <laughs> and it rattles my productivity. So I really try my best. Over the years I've done a lot to bounce back a lot quicker. I realized that regardless that when I'm, whenever a big change happens for me, it's gonna shake me up a little bit, but my bounce back game has gotten a lot better. So during this time, during lockdown, you know, a lot of things were impacting my um, mental health, of course, because it was a transition that none of us could expect, none of us could plan for, none of us were really prepared for. We didn't have any idea of how to navigate it. So it was a bit of a trial and error, just like you guys, you know, when first things first happening, I was just staying in my pajamas, I was in showering, I was working from my bed, I was just being a plain old, just nasty, unproductive, and just one day after the other, the days were just starting to look the same. So one of the things that I identified during that time um, was that my previous apartment, it was just too small. I definitely had outgrown that space. I had been there for about three years and it was time to move. So I'm just getting right into answering the question, why did I move? Because I outgrew my apartment and that happens. I definitely am not the person that likes to move very often. In my last place, I had been there about um, three and a half years and then moving into the one bedroom by myself without a roommate. As some of you guys know, I did after moving out of my family home, I moved into an apartment with a friend at the time and we did the whole roommate situation for about three years. And then after that situation ended, I moved into an apartment by myself, um, a one bedroom. And yeah, it did what it was supposed to do, but it was definitely time for me to move out of that space. I outgrew it, of course. Um, my life as a content creator definitely changed. I was receiving a lot more packages. Being in this Panderosa, I was now working from home a lot more, rotating between being in the office and being at home. So having to be at home all the time, not being able to really go anywhere, not being able to travel, which was something that was very new to me, I realized that I just felt like I was in a box. I was in this one bedroom apartment that had like about under 500 square feet. I didn't have a balcony. All my amenities in my building were closed down. 
um, I couldn't I wasn't traveling very often like I was before so I was in my apartment a lot more than I had been ever so I realized in that time that I needed to get the hell up out of there now um, to go into the next question where did I move so little secret that I haven't actually even shared on any of my social platforms but I actually stayed in the same building I stayed in the same building and I just moved suites why <laughs> because I love my building and I didn't have any complaints about it um, a, a couple of my close friends and family members were just kind of like well why are you even moving if you're gonna stay in the same building because my issue was in the building it was the floor plan and the size of the space that I was in in the building not the actual building I love my building I like I love um, the amenities I have here I love the staff that works here and truly I really had no major complaints and like crazy issues that would run me from the from the um, building so I decided I'm just gonna stay in my building now, at the time that I identified that I wanted to move, it was a lot early. Um, it was a few months before my lease would actually be over, a lot of few months, because my lease was my lease was ending end of September, and I recorded that podcast episode, I think, in March. So that was the time where I was just kind of like, I need to get the hell out of here, but it is way too early in my lease, and also I know with moving into a new space, I'm going to be paying more money. And I just wanted to take as much time as I could before making that change. As I said, I'm a Taurus. Change shakes me up and rattles me. So I wanted to really put my best foot forward before entering a new space and planning it out in a way that just felt good and it was just an easy transition. So what I started doing once I realized that at the end of this lease, I didn't want to stay in that apartment anymore, I started making some um, appointments with the leasing agents here in my building to see what other floor plans were available for my building. When I first moved into my one bedroom, I was moving in a short period of time. I was on a crazy budget and also um, I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew I just wanted a one bedroom. I didn't want a balcony because I had one in my previous apartment and I never used it. So I'm just like, I don't need one. I just need a small space, you know, bedroom, bathroom, living room, that's it. <laughs> I didn't really have um, a lot of um, specifications on a wish list. It was just, this is my budget. This is what I need and this is what we're going to go for. And when I'm looking for an apartment or even if you're house hunting, I think it's very important to definitely make a wish list of things that you really want, what your deal breakers are and your absolute no's so that you're not wasting the person's time that's showing you and you're not wasting your own time just randomly looking at places aimlessly, right? Because the goal is to make a decision and move on. <laughs> not to be sitting here just browsing, you know? So. Um, in the last apartment, I didn't really have a whole lot, so I didn't um, know what else our building offered in terms of units, um, views, floor plans, all that stuff. So now moving, wanting to move, I knew I definitely wanted a balcony. I definitely needed a bigger apartment. I want an extra bedroom because I'm getting so much PR packages. I need an office. I need a dedicated space to film. Um, I knew I wanted a lot of natural light in my apartment because obviously I'm a content creator and natural light is something that is a necessity for me for shooting content. And also I realized it definitely does stimulate my mood and make me more productive and happier. Like, you guys, look at the sun coming in right now and I'm in my bedroom. This is my bedroom. If I went to my, my living room, it would be even more sunlight and it just makes me so much more happy and ready to start my day and just in better spirits. So that was definitely um, a thing. And then also I wanted an island in my kitchen because I do cook, sometimes not a lot, sometimes a lot, depending on how I'm feeling at that time. But I definitely wanted um, an island because in my last apartment I didn't have one and it was something that was just so annoying because I felt like I was also having to move things around as I'm cooking, as I'm cleaning, and I just didn't have any space to put things anywhere. So those were definitely my things and of course more closet space, more cabinet space in the um, kitchen because I'm again one of those people that I don't like having things just out as I look at my messy room. <laughs> but I like everything to have a place um, because it just makes me feel better and less, my, my space isn't cluttered, my mind won't be cluttered and that's what my thoughts are. So those are pretty much the things that were on my mind. So I scheduled an appointment with my leasing agent, I let them know exactly what I wanted. Now let me tell you, I went to go look for apartments on two separate occasions. The first occasion was, you know, I told them exactly what I wanted, I'm like I want a two bedroom, I don't really care about how many bathrooms for now, I need a lot of sunlight. I love this leasing agent, I think he still actually works here, <laughs> you might see this video. But he didn't follow like my needs, okay? 
and it was very frustrating because I felt like he showed me a lot of apartments that did not fit into it and I was like what is the point of you showing me this if this does not meet my criteria you know the, like and it just kind of put a down um it just it annoyed me because I'm just like I'm a very visual person I manifest a lot you know I do my journaling and I'm a very specific person when I'm manifesting and writing down my goals so if you're showing me places that don't even fall into you know what I need like I have nothing to visualize and hold on to so it was very frustrating anyways but I kind of had an idea for like a couple floor plans some of the stuff I wasn't even able to view so again annoying now closer to um, my lease becoming available, I had to wait, I wanted to wait until I got my um, lease renewal notice. Once I got that, I made an appointment with a new leasing agent for my building and I told them again, this is exactly what I want. I want a two bedroom, lots of natural lighting, um, I want any of the balcony and I want it on a high floor and pretty much yeah. I let him know, great guy, <laughs> great guy, um, and he helped me out and we were able to narrow it down to two different floor plans and uh, we decided, I eventually decided on one of them and by the time I put in my application, which was literally only a couple days later um, for it, or not even a couple days later, like a day later, somebody else swiped in and got it. But let me tell you how Jesus works. That suite was, you know, it was at one price and it was a bit more and it was on one floor and another one was coming available that hadn't even been listed yet that was on a much higher floor and actually worked out to being cheaper and yeah so look at God anyways so I applied for that um, got approved of course wasn't surprised you know it was really annoying that they made me go through the whole process again um, we had switched property managers the year before so they made me go through the whole process again as if I was a new tenant which was kind of annoying very annoying and as much as I tried to negotiate them doing certain things like for example I didn't want them to do a credit check not because I have a bad credit I have amazing credit check out my podcast I've talked all about like my finances and the things I've learned in my 20s but as you know, anytime you do an inquiry, like it can be a hard hit or a soft hit. I want no hits. How about that? <laughs> um, and I knew it was definitely going to be, um, I knew it was going to be a hit of some sort. And I didn't want one. And I thought it was unnecessary because I had been living here for three years already. Always pay my, um, I've always paid my rent in full every month no issues around that whatsoever. So I just didn't understand the purpose of it. But they made me do one anyways. So yeah. I got approved for my apartment and they um, gave me, because I got my lease renewal um, like in the beginning of the month but not on the first, I still had to give them 30 days notice to move out of my previous suite which was a little annoying and I was getting possession of my new place August 1st so at the first of the month. Now what ended up happening is there was an overlap of about 10 days between the apartments and so I was still paying about like 10 days on the old apartment while I was in the new one now it was annoying at first but I was just like ah, eh, it's not that big of a deal it's not that much money it's not a big deal um, so I was fine with it now they didn't charge me any additional fees for breaking my lease because I did end up breaking my lease about two months yeah about a month early and it's okay like it wasn't a big deal I think that's the one benefit of having already lived here before and having a good rapport and then also having a good leasing agent represent me was that a lot of that stuff he was able to bypass it and speak to the other um, like property managers and stuff and the other team members to kind of get through some of the red tape for me so shout out to him yeah so overall that was the process uh, next question so the next question that I got all the time on Instagram, and I'm only putting this here because I want to put like a big fat disclaimer of why people need to stop do asking this. People always ask me on social media, where do you live? I live downtown Calgary and that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's all you need to know. I shouldn't even tell you that I live downtown either, but I live downtown Calgary and that's all I'm going to tell you. I think it's very weird when people ask um, other people where they live, whether you're friends with them, 
whether you're family with them, whether you're colleagues and coworkers, whether you follow them online, you really love them and support their content and spend money on their products and services. It is weird and it is weird because it's a safety concern. Nobody needs to know your address or what building you live in or what neighborhood you live in unless they're coming to your house in the next couple of days. It's truly unnecessary and especially as a female content creator, I need to be hyper aware of my safety because crazy things happen all the time and it doesn't matter how big or small your following is, There, it only takes one person to find information out about you and seek you out. And it's, it's, you know, it's alarming, it really is. Something I just want to urge to you guys is that if you peep something like, you know, if you peep that you're looking around at someone's home vicinity and it looks familiar to you, don't go in the comments and comment, oh, you live in da 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 da, or oh my gosh, I used to live over there, and blah blah blah. Don't comment things like that, and definitely do not send a message out to a content creator or a public figure of any kind. Um, letting them know that you know where you live. It's very weird. It's very uncomfortable and it's just it's scary overall You know, we see strange things happening especially in the United States I've seen where you know you have strangers walking up to your door because people have the ring cameras are able to capture people trying to break into their homes, you know people threatening to harm and assault people. It's very scary so I take my safety in incredibly serious so no I'm never gonna tell you where I live and I'm just putting this out there for people that ever ask that question and wonder why I don't respond to it it's because it's none of your business and it's scary that you're asking Whew, thirsty and how did I move all my things so I moved them with the help of my brothers I have an older brother and a younger brother Something else that I used during my move was a dolly. My mom bought a dolly and I was able to use that to help me move all the boxes and move all the bigger stuff myself before my brothers came in and moved all the heavy duty stuff. That was so helpful because I was able to move so many things at one time. And as I said, I was just moving in between suites. So it just made the process, you know, a lot easier just going from one suite to the other with the help of the elevator. I didn't have to book the elevator or anything. I was just moving at all hours of the night and then the daytime because especially during that time, I was working from home that week. So I was able to get a lot done. So honestly, if you're moving, I suggest everyone should just get a dolly. It was about $150 to $160 from Home Depot. So that was definitely a really good buy. Am I going to be giving you guys a tour? No, I'm not really going to be doing an apartment tour. <laughs> I don't think so, but if you kind of want to see, you know, a little glimpse of what the apartment looks like uh, prior to me moving in and some of the viewings, let's play back. So this is the second suite that I'm looking at now. This one is a two bedroom. There's a couple things I don't really like in this one, but like I feel like I can kind of roll with. So this is the second bathroom, ba bedroom, not the master. So this is the one I'd be turning into like an office. The problem with this one is that there's no natural light in here. So I'd always have to be using artificial light, which means that I necessarily wouldn't work out of here like at a desk on a computer editing. But I can still shoot content in here because I can, this space is a lot bigger than the other one. And I can keep the lights up permanently and just shoot, you know, like my sit down YouTube videos and whatever. This one doesn't have a mirror closet, but it still has a closet and it's actually quite a bit bigger. I believe this floor plan has 10 foot ceilings. And so it actually connects to the ensuite master bathroom. So same thing as the last suite where, you know, the bathroom is bigger. There's a lot more counter space in this one, which I love. And there's even more cabinet space underneath. Unlike the other suite that I was looking at, there's no like hitting shelving in it. Ooh, but there is a towel rack on the back, which I really love. This is cute. And yeah, so as you can see, there is no hidden nook, which is okay because there is more spacing. So that's the bathroom we just came out of. And now we're in the master bedroom. And this is the first closet in here. And it has the sliding mirror doors which I love because I can take so many cute photos here you guys like <laughs> my room will always have to be clean and then you know we have this this is the wall across from it there's a window on this side and there's one over here I could always mount a TV here or I can go TV list because to be honest I have a TV in my bedroom now but I don't even watch it in there barely 
so there's room to put some sort of dresser here and then this is the second closet that's in this room it's a lot smaller but this is where I could probably like put all my winter stuff or like my excess so that's really good I like that there's more closet space you know room to hide my clothes honey and then when we exit the master bedroom here is another closet that we have and this is where the washer and dryer is there's no shelving in here but there is enough room where I can put my laundry in here and I can still put in some shelving units or like a cart or something to hold my laundry detergent and all that stuff and then across from it so here is another closet and this is where I can store all my jackets and my coats and there's actually two, so I'd have to get some sort of a stool. But there's two shelves in here, so we're really utilizing all the real estate up here with the height. And you see they have baskets here, so same thing, I can put like my gloves in there, my toques, all that fun jazz, you know, my mask, because that's the world we live in now. And same thing, this one has a mirror door. And then this is the half bathroom in here. And as you can see, there's no bathtub, which I appreciate because it's only me living here as much as I want a second bathroom. I don't need one that has a tub in it because ain't nobody sleeping over here. But this is cute. And you know, we have everything here ready for the guests to do their business. And then there's wall space. So this is what they do in the showrooms. They like to differentiate to kind of give you a visual presentation of what to expect. And then this is the living room area, which is cute. I have nothing in my walls right now. I honestly look like a person that doesn't live there. <laughs> And then this is the kitchen here, same setup, except there is no um, closet in here, but there's lots of cabinet space, which is fine. And of course we have the beautiful island again. So there's a few things that you guys are able to see um, in the suites. Uh, in the show suites that I viewed. I really love this apartment. Having an extra bedroom was definitely, you know, a bonus for me. Have I really utilized it since I've been in this apartment the last few months? No. Currently, it's filled with a bunch of boxes of PR that I have received over the last year, which I'm actually going to be sorting out this week for my giveaways uh, to give away on Instagram. So make sure you're following me over there so that you guys can go ahead and enter to win a whole beauty regimen really <laughs> but that's all I had to say about my me moving and the updates thank you guys so much for watching my vlogmas one video stay tuned for tomorrow's video it's gonna be very exciting if you love this video make sure that you share it on Instagram Twitter um, Facebook wherever wherever you got friends to share thumbs up this video comment below if you are currently moving or if you even moved during the pandemic what that process was for you any good tips that you can give for anyone that's looking to move and let me know also when you guys comment let me know where you're from what country what city province state i would love to see who i'm connecting with as you guys know i'm based in calgary alberta in canada not toronto the city where drake's from i am out west <laughs> So uh, make sure you guys comment below and if you haven't already go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Tanisha.Cherry and subscribe to my podcast, The Cherry Lounge Podcast. Until we meet again tomorrow, bye!